Hey everybody, Pat, welcome back, Patrick here. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at building out the user interface and getting out all of everything set up right on our uh, Babylon um, game. Uh, so the first thing we're going to need to do is take a look at our JetBrains interface. Uh, we're going to be incorporating this into the uh, HTML boilerplate template that's available um, on the web. Uh, it's, you know, when you open up JetBrains, it's an option that you can just check to kind of open uh, that file, or you can go on to GitHub, and I'll provide the link for it, and download that file itself, and then just go from there, begin uh, modifying your uh, web application, or web um, HTML5 page, or whatever you're going to be making. Uh, so I think this is going to be good for getting everyone comfortable with with how we can kind of build out the act, a more complex software, so I think we should get into the habit of using um, kind of these rules of thumb that people use. Okay, so uh, without uh, further ado, why don't we get started and take a look at how we're going to be putting this whole thing together. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open up my JetBrains, and I'm going to come back over. And you can see um, I have actually added a couple things into here using Node, the Node Packet Manager, um, just so that I can kind of compile this at a later point. If you guys are interested, I can kind of go over the, the, the JetBrains um, IDE. But for now, since we're only going to be really worrying about uh, one uh, a handful of files, you can ignore most of this stuff for the most part. Because uh, we only really need these kind of... Um, actually, in fact, we only really need these four files up top here uh, to kind of have everything go. And I just accidentally closed one. Okay. So when you open up the HTML, the boilerplate, uh, file, it's going to pretty much give you most of this stuff minus this modernizer stu stuff that I've added in here. So, and it's going to give you kind of these vendor prefixes and yada yada yada. It's also going to prompt you for some jQuery information, but we're going to not load it up that way. We're going to load it up slightly differently. And I'm just going to fix this real quick. Okay. All right. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm actually going on to the Google uh, getmdl.io website and I'm getting the material design um, uh, style sheets directly off their CDN network. We're going to actually run everything in a off the CDN um, just so you can see this real quick. Here's our material design and we're going to be getting the files right off of here. Okay, so that's getmdl.io. And that's just going to give us kind of some uh, base stylings that we can use for a lot of stuff. So I'm loading up the fonts, and I'm also loading up the styling. I'm also um, loading up a local version of Modernizer. And what Modernizer is going to do is it's, it's, <clears throat> it's going to first check to see if the jQuery CDN is available. And if it's not available what it's going to do is load up the uh, local version of jQuery. So we make sure that that is being loaded. Now the modernizer.load is taking in an array and we're giving it a series of either objects or um, <clears throat> or actual like locations to to load things. So you can see right here what we're doing is we're, we're sending it this kind of this object right here followed by our this uh, js forward slash ui user interface js file that we're going to make um, and then we're you know adding in the comma and going into loading the javascript library uh, for material design we're also loading in the cdn network for babylon js so I'll make sure that we're not handling any of this stuff and then we're also going to be our main file that we are always editing we're going to be loading that um, and while we're loading it, we're actually going to be calling the game and um, creating a new game using this on. Basically, once this file is loaded, it's going to call this function right here. And that's gonna, that function is going to create a new game state. Okay. So that, that's basically how we're going to set everything up. Um, and then in our index file, you'll see that I've created a container class. And I've created an, a um, score ID with the current score. I've also created kind of a start game uh, class and that's all, that's gonna say let's play Simon Says and the button ID for a start button and it's gonna be calling the classes available um, on the material design website and then here's our canvas. So in, in a, a essence what all this is gonna do pretty much 
is do this whole let's play Simon Says, you hit new game, and it's going to fade in and give us our this current score. So it's pretty straightforward, um, but what this is going to allow us to do is kind of get our interface working that we're going to be able to, at a later point, put more information in and get more functionality out of it. Okay, and this is just going to be basically our framework for doing so. Okay, so let's look and see how this is going to work. Um, so why don't we first start uh, with the main.js file, and that's going to load our, our game state. Okay, and so what we're doing is we're, we're basically checking to see if there's an instance of this Simon Says uh, existing, um, and if there isn't, it's going to run this function right here, Simon Says Game. Okay, and this is the game. So when you hit the button, it's going to call this if it doesn't already exist. Okay, and what is it? What is it? What's it going to call? It's this game function. Okay, so here's our, ga our um, game dot in it. Okay, initialize, and that's going to give us the jQuery variable right here, um, and it's going to bind onto the start button the start game function. Okay, and that's this start game function. We can put anything in here right now but that's basically just binding that this function to uh, this button right here okay all right um, the other thing we're doing is we are um, I don't even need this actually in here I don't believe I need that so it was a throwback to something else I had earlier yeah okay Okay, so the first thing you need to be aware of is that um, <clears throat> we have this hide button. Basically, um, what this is going to do is call up the user interface where we've created functions that are going to basically hide some of the items in the previous screen. It's also going to be at the same time call a function that shows the, the score and gets everything prepped. Now, we can make this more complicated uh, later on on the line, and we'll, you'll see kind of how this is structured and how easy it's going to be. Uh, once you start getting all this stuff going. Uh, and then all of this stuff, see, this is all the information that we had from beginning to end that we built in the last tutorial. And we're just kind of dragging and dropping all that information in there. Okay. All right, so let's look at the, let's look at the uh, UI file. All right. So here's our UI file. Basically checking for, is, for <clears throat> whether that exists. And if it doesn't, we're going to basically create this um, UI object that's going to hold, um, under the Simon Says, it's going to hold all of these functions right here so that we can reference set functions just by calling them right over in here. And just keeps everything organized so that we're not kind of putting all of the functions all in one document. We're just going to split them apart and stick them in and call them when we need to. Okay. So that's just right in here. Basically, we have a hide um, a hide button function that basically searches for the new game, fades it out, and it does so um, when this is being well. When is this hide button being called? This one is being called on click, basically, as well as the show score. Okay. So and then you can just keep adding functions that you make right into the UI, and just just. Since they're all just listed as objects, you just set a comma, you know, and then write it in the same basic manner. Pretty pretty straightforward um, in regards to putting all that together. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Oh, yeah, the CSS. Let's look at, take a look at the CSS. So this is the default CSS in the HTML5 boilerplate. <clears throat> okay. And you'll see it just basically has some um, resets on everything and gets everything so all the browsers are kind of uh, consistent. And then when we get to the author's custom styles, you'll see that uh, what I've done is I've created an absolute positioned container. All right. And the reason I've done so is because, um, because of positioning, we want all of our elements to be on top or behind the GL canvas which means that we need some sort of positioning system to handle that. Absolute works, fixed works, the rest of them aren't going to work uh, for our purposes. So by doing absolute, we can just um, position the container left 20% with a width of 60%. That'll give you 20% on the other side. Um, 
So let's take a look and see how that is. It's like sudo responsive basically, depending on the browser size. But you can see that container right there is occupying the center, but it's absolutely positioned. Okay. And that's nice because it just means that by moving, changing the size of the browser, it's still going to act responsively. And as you can see, everything here is responsive. All right, and we'll, we will be continuing to kind of play around with this thing and get it really, really cool on you the end. Um, but again, I'm kind of building this thing as I go, so uh, not everything has been clearly mapped out. That's why I'm trying to create a nice little structure for everything uh, to kind of fit into so we can easily make adjustments. Uh, the only other thing, you know, you have your GL canvas uh, with 100% height, 100%, yada, yada, yada. Um, the only other thing that's uh, pretty important along this process is uh, the score. All I did basically was I took the uh, material design stuff and pretty much ripped all that information out and then pretty much copy pasted it right back in um, to kind of uh, make that I uh, item. I did at make the position fixed uh, with the 6 and 5% right. Okay, fix just means that if you're scrolling and stuff, it's always going to be located in the same spot. As opposed to absolute, where absolute, if you scroll the window down, um, it's going to stay at that, you know, whatever the size of the entire page is. Whereas, whereas uh, fixed is going to be relative to the browser window. Okay. All right, so uh, that is pretty much it for what we're going to be going through today. Um but as you can see, this is this is going to end up being pretty cool, uh, and this is a good starting starting point for getting our getting our game going. Anyways, thanks again for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe. Hey.